you may already know this, but our show bought this car, a 2022 GR86, as a long-term review car. But of course, underneath, it's a Subaru. Since its introduction in 2013, it has been a collaboration between Subaru and Toyota. It exists at all because Toyota owns a good percentage of Subaru and wanted to have a small, lightweight, fairly affordable rear wheel drive car in the fleet. So they got Subaru to build it. You get some different electronics and ECU tuning and the suspension is a little bit different. But ultimately, these two cars, the collaboration, reveal very little difference. Or do they? We made our choice by buying the GR86 instead of the Subaru BRZ, but did we make the right choice? Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast, this is Everyday Driver. In 2009, Toyota hosted a focus group in Los Angeles asking the group, should they build a small sports car? I was in that initial focus group, and I guess they did it right, because eventually I bought the car. I had a 2013 Scion FRS, so the first generation, before they even renamed it, the GT86. This car just feels like an old friend. Hello, my old nemesis, my old friend. This car conflicts me like no other car has. It's the 2020 Hakone 86 the car named after Japan's famous driving turnpike, The Road. We've covered this car a lot. You can see many videos, including on the actual Hakone edition, but it's fascinating to get back in it. I'm just conflicted constantly because of the power. 205 horsepower, 156 pound-feet of torque. And I've got this horsepower versus torque graph on my display here. It looks like a mountain landscape. Torque should not look like that. Interestingly, from a stop, this feels a little more light on its feet than the second generation does. That has to do with the tuning, which has this instant torque spike to get you off the line. But then it dies away. We've talked about it like crazy. That torque dip in the middle, you just can't get around it. You can shift around it after you're out of first gear, I guess. When you shift gears and encounter the torque dip immediately, it's disappointing. And it's funny because every first gen 86 owner always talks about mods to make it better. Yes, there were plenty of ways you could tune it out. Many people did superchargers and that kind of thing. But what's interesting is to climb into the second generation and realize you've stopped thinking about it. This car keeps reminding you the GR86 goes, yeah, I'm powerful enough. When you're at speed in the 86, it's fun. It's just too loud. I don't like the engine note, and I don't like the loud engine note not matching the kind of power I feel like it should. This specific Hakone is actually on the TRD lowering spring, so it, you can see that it actually looks a little lower than it normally does. It really hasn't changed the dynamics that much. This car has always been great to drive. The steering in this first gen actually feels a little bit lighter. I don't think there's any more information, but I do think there's a little bit less effort required in the steering. That, that surprises me. The driving dynamics on the 86, the first gen, are so good that you never have to feel like you're playing catch up to the big boys. This car tracks through corners very well, but the next two cars, those cars are better and they should be. There's just a little bit of off-center deadness. The information goes away in comparison to the other two. I'm fascinated by that. You're gonna have to drive them back to back to notice most of these nuances, but in the steering, I think that's clear. The main place you notice the difference, of course, is the stiffness and the power. But the chassis has always been great, and I was very worried that this wouldn't sell enough and then if they made a second generation, they would change it so much you couldn't even see the origin story of this car. Thankfully, this has become the basis for a better second generation. For the next generation though, the refinement has been improved so dramatically 
the chassis has been stiffened. I can feel it. They also lengthened the wheelbase five millimeters, stiffened what they call a hoop around where the C pillar is, and came away with truly a driver's car, the one that I wanted. And the reason I wanted this was power, certainly, but it was the jump that this car did. So for this second generation, much to my amazement, Toyota and Subaru decided to do a larger engine. This is now a 2.4 liter Subaru boxer engine, still with that Toyota fuel injection system on top of it. It's barely heavier by like a dozen pounds than the first generation was, which is amazing that they kept the car around 2,800 pounds. But the big difference is the power bump that comes with that larger engine. The 2.4 liter bumps us up to 228 in horsepower and 184 pound-feet in torque. The second generation may not have much of a torque jump, it's 33 pound-feet, but in a car this light, that makes a difference. And it's a much more consistent delivery that actually feels a lot more like the first gen did after I tuned it. On your steering wheel, go to the graph right here. It measures your RPM with the torque and the horsepower gauge. When you're getting into it and you shift up through the gears from a stop, this car comes alive. It's got the excitement that the prior gen was missing. That's why I wanted this car. Finally, I feel like I could drive it really hard. I don't remember ever thinking that the first generation had a lot of body flex, but when you get into the second generation, you can tell this has less. This has a lower center of gravity in the first generation with subtle tricks like an aluminum roof. This is 50% stiffer than the first generation. When you sit here and drive it on a back road, you can tell there is a solidity to this car now and a precision in the front end that the first generation lacked. Now, the first generation has slightly sharper turn in and it also has a lighter steering feel. The steering effort is lighter. The clutch and shifter feel on the second generation are a definite improvement over the first gen. Toyota and Subaru talked about the fact that they'd done that, but when you drive them back to back, you go, yeah, this is a much more satisfying six speed to work with. And the first one wasn't bad. You also remember that there was a massive delay between the launch of the second gen BRZ and this car. We thought, okay, Subaru's going first. Great, soon we will hear about the Toyota. And six months went by. And we wondered and finally heard from Toyota that this car had become a GR car, a true GR car. Mr. Toyota himself had changes he wanted to make to make it more the kind of car he wanted. And they claimed to do a lot of changes to make it more what they wanted it to be if they wanted to put a GR86 badge on it. And Subaru kind of scratched their head and went, you didn't change much until you drive them together. And then you realize there are differences here. I'm pleased to find that both of these cars have different personalities and not just slightly different. So underneath it's a Subaru. The GR86 is this car. The interiors are identical with the possible exception of the accent stripe which on the BRZ is red. And the fact that, oh look, I have Subaru graphics on my screen now and somebody thought to put a Subaru badge on the steering wheel. That really makes up the only list of differences. And now that I've seen that BRZ sitting side by side with this car, well, I definitely prefer the styling of this. It doesn't have a goofy smiley face with dimples, and the BRZ does. I also really like the ducktail. You can't get that on the BRZ, but those are just cosmetic. You can go with whatever you want there. If you drive either one individually, I think you'll have kind of a hard time telling the difference. If you have the opportunity, like we are, to drive them back to back on the same road and drive them pretty hard, you can find a few things that stand out and you go, oh, that really is different, isn't it? That's a surprise. And up to this point, we had not driven the BRZ. This is the first time I've really driven it hard. Now you've heard of the differences, the ECU tune. The Subaru has a different spring rate and dampers and bushings and the rear stabilizer bar is connected to the body instead of the subframe. And I knew as soon as I jumped into the BRZ that despite the exact same power and torque output, 228 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque, it reminded me of the first generation car, the original 86. It reminded me of the power delivery, not the power. Of course, there's more power in this car, but it reminded me of the way it makes power. The power delivery here is different, and it isn't 
as satisfying as the power delivery in the GR86, and I'm very surprised to discover that. And I've heard almost no mention of it, except for the fact that Subaru and Toyota did acknowledge that they each tuned the engines themselves. There was a lot of discussion about the fact that this second generation killed the torque dip. Yes and no. It's still there on both these new cars. The difference is that the car has more torque in general and the crossover with the horsepower has been moved. Strangely, the crossover isn't as good in the BRZ. You can actually feel this car stumble a little bit. If I had driven the BRZ first before we drove the GR86, I would not have recommended to Todd that we buy one. It doesn't have that jump, that excitement, the engine power that I desperately wanted and was expecting to feel. It's not in the BRZ. The way the BRZ develops its power gives me the same boredom that I felt on the original 86. The handoff between the torque and the horsepower is reminiscent of that first generation. There's a little bit of a, a held back stutter to it. Not as bad as the first gen. This still feels significantly more powerful than the first generation did. It just doesn't feel as satisfying as the GR86 does. I don't know that you'd notice if you didn't drive them back to back. It's that close, but it is here. When you get in the BRZ, the first thing you should do is go to your steering wheel menu here, go all the way over to the graph of torque versus horsepower. It's not a universal graphic in both of these cars. The one in the BRZ shows a different crossover of the torque and the horsepower than the one in the GR86. And guess what? You can feel that, and it's shown right there in the game. This car feels faster. Every time I get in it, there's more energy behind the power. There's more fun, there's more jump, spark. There is more here. Both companies are being open about the differences between the two cars. One car is aimed more towards stability and therefore is more comfortable. This car is the track car. You can feel that this is now under the Gazoo Racing Team and truly something you want on track. We have this car back on its original Michelin PS4, so we had it on the exact same wheel and tire combo as that BRZ comes with stock. And these PS4s on this chassis have so much wonderful grip. You can take a Canyon Road at whatever speed you're comfortable with and just enjoy it. It sticks like crazy, and it is a momentum car in the best possible ways. It feels more powerful than the Miata does, but it has that same character where once you hang on to your speed, you may never need to brake. This 86 feels more light on its feet than the BRZ does. The BRZ is better across the board than the first gen, but this is an improvement beyond that updated BRZ. And both companies have also said they've tuned their cars to reflect their company's ethos, really what kind of customer they're going after. But the result of Subaru doing a slightly stiffer spring rate in the front and a slightly softer one in the rear, sure, I can feel a stability through corners, but ultimately it's made it more comfortable. If comfort is what you want, and you're looking for something with just a little bit less of an edge, the BRZ is for you. I am surprised how much I like the steering feel on the BRZ. There's just a slight, lighter, delicate bit of information it's a great balance between road information, car precision, and handling feel. This BRZ still has its uh, speaker connected that accentuates the engine noise and it's awful. I really, really don't like it. And now having one car with it turned on and one with it off, I am certain we made the right choice. I love the feel of the BRZ, and the GR86 is the car that I want. See those bumps right there? The BRZ is more compliant over those. But this is more energetic, it's more ready, it's just on all the time. Yeah, the way this car plants itself after its weight shift is what I'm looking for. When you drive them back to back, there is a gulf between the two cars because you're so tuned into the minutia of everything. Interior styling, yeah, 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 yeah. But how they perform, what are you looking for? 
every time I drive this car, I feel like I should buy one. And I remember, oh yeah, we did. It's so good to drive. This is still not a powerhouse. That's not the point. And I don't want you to think that the first generation is worth throwing out and not be good. It's still an excellent sports car. This second generation, 2022 GR86, feels more satisfying than the first gen because it feels more complete and refined. I don't think that the changes are as profound as Paul likes to make them out to be. They're subtle. There's small percentages that have changed throughout many features of the car. But it adds up to something that feels more complete and better for the money. All three of them are brilliant and fun to drive. That's the entire point. And thank you Toyota and Subaru and Fuji Heavy Industries for building these things. In the case of these cars, I am completely fine that two companies have collaborated to build something fun. What I find so funny is the GR86 top level is the premium. The BRZ premium is the base level and then goes up to the limited and it's slightly less money than this. But nevertheless, these are the two top trims and you can get them, they're aspirational. They're nearly affordable. They are affordable, yes. And I got really concerned about these two not being different enough. It was nice to see such a broad difference between the two. I, like you, was worried I was gonna get in and be like, this just drives the same with a different badge. It doesn't drive the same with a different badge. They do feel different, and I think we bought the right one. I do too. But I think, based on the handling of the BRZ, that you would prefer this car. The handling feel. Really? Both cars are equal in power and torque, mm -hmm. but the way this delivers is far more energetic. This is the car I want to be in. And you heard me say that if we had driven the BRZ first, I wouldn't have wanted us to buy it. That is interesting. And I think that you're right, that you probably wouldn't because you really fell in love with this the minute we drove it. it and I do think that the BRZ feels closer to the first gen than the GR86 does. But the other thing I keep coming back to is the level of nuance we're talking about. This is I true. I mean, if yes. you drive an SUV and you climb into any of these threes, you're going to be like, oh my gosh. And if you drive any of the two new ones by themselves, you're going to be like, I don't see what the problem is. Which means we're all winners. You choose any of these, you're a winner. Everyone right? gets a star today and a ribbon later. Both Subaru and Toyota made meals with the same ingredients. They invited you over for a great steak dinner and Subaru did an excellent job and served you a wonderful meal. And then you went over to Toyota to discover they're an excellent chef. I don't have the same kind of excitement in the other two that I do in this one. This one makes me feel energetic every time I drive it. And it's simply the ECU tune and how this car rides. Because I prefer this suspension tuning where it is a little bit more neutral and prone to oversteer. And I also prefer this power delivery, which I thought would be identical and isn't. You can't shop the BRZ and the GR86 without knowing what these differences are and having in mind what your usage is. 